E hihoa, e tō mātau, mātua i te rangi. Koko e te atua kaharawa o rā tonu. Nau mātau, i whaka o rā. At heia no atia te ti mātanga o tēne rā. Mau, mā te mia. Kaha, mātau e ti aki a iene, kaua hoki, mātau e tū a ki a taka e i tēne rā, ki te hara, ki a ria, rā nei, ki roto, ki te mate, ingari, Tohu tohu ne, hoka ti ka ia e koe, a matau mahe katoa. Ki a mia tonu, a i matau e ne mia, e tae nana ti kou, ti ti ro, ko ehu kariki hoki, tō matau mahe. Kariki. Amen. Amen. O te amurangi ki moa, te hapai ho ki muri, e hara takutoa i te toa takitahi. Engari, He toa takitina, fa tanga rongaro te tangata, toi tū te whenua. Ko te rea reo a kia ki uta, ko te whakataki mai a toroa ki tai, he kotuku ki te raki, he kakapo ki te whenua. Haomi e, hui e, taiki e. This is Jane. No, here we go. Kia ora mai koutou katoa. Nga mihi mahana ki kotu katoa, ki te atoa tēnā koe, ki te papa tu anuku tēnā koe, ki te whare nei tēnā koe, ki te hunga mate, moi mai rā, ki te hunga ora nau mai haere mai, nō rera tēnā koto, tēnā koto, ko kia ora mai tato. Kia ora, tēnā koutou e te whānau. Ko te atua, te poi manaki, te poi atawhai, te kaihanga o nga mea katoa. Kua hui mai nei, ki tēnei hui hui nga. I nga māti, he mai mai aroha ki a koutou. Ka nui te hari, mō tō koutou manawa nui. Ki te aro mai, ki te awhina, i nga kōrero, 
e pai ana, e pā ana ki tēnei kaupapa tahamari. Tēnā tātou e hui hui mai nei, nā rau awa, tēnā tātou katoa. Kia ora. E te atua Uh, just if you're wondering about that himine, himine 116, it is from the Māori hymn book. Some of you might have a copy, some of you may have seen the book, but if you want to purchase the book with all the Māori hymns in them, there's no translations, but the book is there, and you can um, email uh, Te Piho Patanga o Aotearoa on that email address on the screen and purchase one. They'll send it to you. Uh, and there are 200 and, I'll tell you in a minute, 209 hymns in the book. And many of Kingi Ihaka's hymns are there. So a uh, beautiful hymn from Hatea. Uh, no reira, e te whānau a te karaiti, no mai hoki mai ki tō tātou nei kaupapa. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for, for your openings and your karakia and your mihi and, uh, and gathering once more in Taha Māori. It's always a pleasure to serve you in this way. Thank you couple of hard words there I know this morning uh, thank you uh, Leslie there was a couple of words there I, I know were just a bit tricky um, and probably the only one uh, and, and it is hard INA INA is a hard one and Tikana Tikana they're, they're hard ones Ka pai though beautiful thank you tino pai tō mahi i te atanei. my usual disclaimer And uh, for those who haven't been able to join us uh, from last week when the series kicked off, uh, this series is um, focusing on unpacking kapahaka. Uh, we've had an interview with uh, John Tarpane, an esteemed rangatira in the kapahaka circles, uh, and certainly uh, within uh, Tehahi Mihingare, the Anglican Church, uh, and more specifically at Mihana Māori, the Mihana Māori, Holy Sepulchre in uh, Kaiba Pass. Uh, and he is the um, rangatira of the Auckland Anglican 
Māori club of which I am a member. Uh, so that was a wonderful insight really on Kapahaka was that interview last week. We carry on with that theme this week and throughout the series. We'll continue to uh, pick up on some readings from the Paipera Tapu uh, and we'll also use the sentences and collects, Raranga, Menga, Inoi, uh, that are for this coming Sunday. For, so for those of you who are uh, doing virtual services on Sundays, uh, you'll be able to practice the sentence and collect uh, for the day. And of course, our reo kupu waiata himene, and that himene that you just heard is a very, very well-known one. Uh, it doesn't matter where you travel in Aotearoa and possibly even overseas. Uh, if you ask them to sing it, they'll know it. They know it. If you started it, they'll come in and join in. Uh, so it's a very, very popular uh, himine amongst Māori people. And, uh, and of course, who best to uh, tell us about uh, or unpack kapahaka is Māori kapahaka presenters themselves. And it's, a, uh, it's an honour and blessing to be able to offer their insights to you here in Taha Māori. Uh, this particular uh, waiata, this is a waiata, and some of you will know it, you'll hear it in a moment. Uh, again, it's an emphasis on the, um, I'm bringing it up in this way because it's, I'm emphasizing the vowel sounds again. Uh, the uh, combination of the vowel sounds, uh, to -ia, to -ia. and so the, the O has got a macron, so it's slightly more um, elongated, to -ia. Mai, mai, te waka nei, kūmea, kūmea, mai te waka nei, ki te takotoranga, very short and sharp, takotoranga, i takoto ai, tiriti, tiriti, te mana motu hake. There'll be, there'll be a um, translation for this shortly. Tiriti, uh, that's treaty, so it's used a lot in uh, Māori vernacular, uh, a, a word that, you know, um, you may already be familiar with, but certainly when you hear it, you know they're talking about the treaty, te treaty o waitangi. Mana motuhake refers to that as well. Uh, te, tanga, te tangi a te manu e, all nice and short and sharp. Pipi farau roa. Pipi farau roa. I'm emphasizing the mana of each vowel. Each vowel has its own mana and it should be said with its own mana. Occasionally, yes, it, uh, you know, double vowels do get lost in one, word, uh, one sound. Kui. 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 Fiti fiti ora. Huie, of course you know this, we used it this morning. Homie, huie, taikie. So generally the speaker will do the homie, huie, and then everyone in the um, gathering comes in with taikie. So let's listen. Akarongo mai ki te waia tane. No, providing everything goes well. To ia mai te waka nei, ku me a mai te waka nei, ki te tako to ranga tako to ai. Ya 
May, or this more popularized version that we're learning today, is the second verse of a waiata that Master Kava Piri Potapu composed after he was instructed by Waikato Princess de Puya Herangi in 1936 to build carved wakatoa representing the people of the principal voyaging canoes that arrived in Aotearoa from Hawaii. They are the ones we hear in the karanga opening uh, with that karanga, which you've heard and I've stayed with the theme that we've stayed with since we began earlier this year or last year actually. Tainui, Te Arawa, Tokumaru, Takitimu, Aotea, Mātātua, Kurahaupo, Orota, Ngā Toki Matawhao Rua. They're the canoe. And so this waiata was um, the second verse, as I say, of a waiata that Master Kava Piri Potapu composed. So not only was he part of the carvings on the front of each canoe, canoes that he was carving at that time, but he's also a composer of music. It's a lovely one, and I'm sure I can see some lips moving during the singing of that. Uh, and so it's nice for us to know its history. Uh, the Wakatoa would go to Waitangi for the 1940, which is 100 years, 1940 centennial of the signing of Te Tiriti. They would be shown nationwide on newsreels and picture theatres as symbols of a Māori renaissance. And hapu scratching a living in depopulated backcountry areas, impoverished and isolated after a century of war, poverty and epidemics, would get the message that conditions were about to change for the better bit of the history on that way to let's hear it again. Toi a mai te wakane Kume a mai te wakane Ki te tako to ranga tako to ai Tiri ti te mana mo tu ha that go with it too. 
And of course, those young boys that are in the opening slide as well with the karanga, that's all part of a haka pōwhiri. We haven't done a haka pōwhiri yet in the series, but uh, you, if you've been to a big pōwhiri, you will know that there is quite a lot uh, in that pōwhiri, which goes on for some, for at least an hour, if not longer. Uh, but you get that, uh, and and then those kids doing that, they're talking about toia mai, bring in your waka. So we, our waka today, of course, is might be a hybrid, <laughs> might be an electric, might be a leaf <laughs> nowadays. But it does talk about the. Uh, it refers to how you're arriving. How how are you travelling here, toia mai? Lovely. So that brings me to a challenge. You know me, there's always a challenge in every um, Tahamari series. Uh, and I'm wanting, uh, oh, I shouldn't put it that way. I'm challenging you to put together a little waiata that you're singing. A little waiata of, um, you know, that you've learnt in this series. It can be toia mai, it can be tūtira mai, which we covered last week. It could be some a little one of those uh, small himines. Te aroha, te fakapono, e te rangi mari e ta 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 e. So, I'm here's your challenge for this series, and Tahamadi is to record yourself doing. You don't have to do the whole song, just one verse. Uh, something that we can keep and something that grows, that grows us as a rōpū tahamari, that uh, you're willing to actually, uh, this is where the rubber hits the road, I guess. <laughs> uh, homework, maybe, however you view it. But uh, uh, we would welcome uh, your contributions of a little uh, waiata, a little kapahaka something, it can be a Whatever you think is appropriate. It's not a chord at all. This is about a waiata or a chant. And if I could have those back by Monday the 25th, by Monday the 25th, um, Monday the 25th, is that right? Hmm. Let me check on that date in the meantime. And uh, you tell me the one to choose and we'll all record that one or two for this homework. I'll come back to you with those instructions. So that's my challenge to you on uh, uh, to record yourself doing a little waiata or a little haka. Resource, plenty of resources available on Google. You actually don't need to come back to the Tahamari recordings. There's plenty of resources. Kia ora. These little sayings are directionals. Uh, we use them in church, you know, please be seated, please kneel, please stand. We use them all the time. And in the prayer book, they're either e tu, e noho, um, and many others. And noho puku is, is silent. But these are more, more common ones that we use asking people to do something. Uh, and one of the most common ones is me noi tato, let us pray. Beautiful. You could use that all the time. Uh, whenever you're going into a prayer, whenever you're praying for food, you don't have to do the prayer in Māori, but you can introduce the prayer by saying me i noi tato. E tu tato. Tato, as you know, is all of us, you included. Um, when you use the word mato with an M, that's minus the people you are talking to. It's a good little recipe there. When it's got M in it, it's minus the people you are talking to. When it's T, it's total. It includes everyone, the total amount of people in that hui or in that gathering. 
So kawaiata tata means let us all sing, yourself included. So when you're giving the direction, you're including yourself. You've heard us use it, um, tēnā koto, tēnā koto, which is well you, well you, or, you know, to you, to you. Tēnā tato katoa, you include yourself. Uh, e noho. Pakarongo mai, you heard me use that quite a lot. Listen up. Titiro mai, you've also heard me using that when I'm running a uh, video. Korero mai is a nice one. When you're trying to get people to uh, participate in a conversation or you're doing a round table or something like that, or someone would like to say something, they're not quite sure if they want to say it, or they feel maybe not quite um, confident to say it, then if this is a, a, a nice way to say, it doesn't, it doesn't always mean speak up. It means, yep, yeah, tell us. Tell us, tell me. Kōrero mai. Whakaro mai is share your thoughts. Whakaro mai. So some people, often people will sit there and they're silent right throughout the whole thing. Um, sometimes you need to encourage them. Share your thoughts. Whakaro mai. Kōrero mai. Uh, tūri tūri. You don't want that being said. <laughs> was said a lot when I was a child. <laughs> uh, yeah, but it's still said, even with adults. Uh, kia kaha, beautiful, lovely. So again, this might be someone who's normally quiet in a gathering or, you know, and you're trying to encourage them. So you go, um, kōrero mai, kia kaha. Lovely expression of, of um, encouragement. Kōrero mai, whakaro mai. Pause for a moment, kia kaha. Uh, huri here, yeah, that's a great expression as well. So it doesn't, or it doesn't literally mean to turn around. Often it's to um, refer back to. Uh, ko huri here, taku kōrero. So I'm going to go back to what I was saying. But it is about turning direction. Uh, kapia, close, uh, that's also used in prayers. Uh, kapia tatato hui, close this hui, me, te, me i noi tato. Uh, Kia mahaki, you don't want this kind of said to you either, really. But if you were encouraging somebody on in a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, and they were being quite brash, uh, you want to sort of settle them down a little bit and quieten them down. Kia mahaki, be humble. Kawa e uh, that's used uh, in the public arena as well as uh, in the private arena. Um, and it does need to be said sometimes. Uh, karanga mai. Lovely. Um, karanga mai. Might be, uh, you know, there's people hanging around at the gate or there's people not sure what they're doing and, and, and somebody notices them and somebody says to you, oh, what shall we do? And I'll say, karanga mai. Nga manuhiri. Karanga mai. So call them. Tell them to come. Katorika. Uh, sorry, this is not a directional. This should have been on the next slide. And mihinare. So in the unpacking of kapahaka, you know I uh, introduced you to a lot of the words that John used in the interview. Uh, these are some of the words that our next guest will be using, who I'll introduce very shortly. Uh, Timatatini was also mentioned last week, but I didn't uh, offer you a translation, but this is what it literally means, the many faces. Uh, Timatatini is the um, big kapahaka competition. Whakaeke, that's when the big group comes on. 
Waiatatira, Coral, and the Whakawatia is the exit. Uh, rangi we used last week, uh, John used it last week and he referred to the tune. But Rangi in this week's interview refers to the sky. Means both. Manaki tia, support. So when you're trying to uh, encourage people and strengthen them to come on, kōrero mai, whakaro mai, kia kaha. Uh, you're, you're expressing manaki tia, manaki to that person. Whenua, land, kākahu, clothing, rohe region, kuia, female elder, karaua, karaua, male elder, pakeke, is a mature person, pakeke. Generally, uh, people with perhaps the same coloured hair as me, but certainly the older generation. Uh, pakeke, the more mature. Waha, mouth. Uh, iara, iara, uh, often said twice, daily or day after day, meaning, um, you know, that it continues on. Kata kata. <laughs> it's lovely. It's laughter. Uh, very common, very common um, expression. And we love laughing at ourselves, by the way, Māori. We just love it. We don't see it as offensive. Uh, there's a, there's, the heart's in the right place. The ngāko is always in the right place when we kata kata about each other and tease each other. And we do it a lot. Uh, and it's in a whanonga, you know, no way. Uh, nobody gets offended. Uh, it's a little less... Um, stringent than certainly uh, non-Māori protocols. Um, so we love to cut the cutter about each other, uh, uh, whatever that might be. Hakama, I brought that up last week. Uh, ihi, ihi is the thrill or the power. It's that just that extra punch in something. It's not just your sort of mainstream. It's got a bit of a punch. Uh, tiaki, to look after. Kupu, of course, words, and tinana is the body, the physical body, tinana. Taha you know, taha Māori, mātua, parents, both parents. Uh, mātakitaki, spectators or people who are your audience. Poi poi in this sense is not the poi, the, the little ball on the end of a string. Poi poi in this word is to nurture. Uh, reanga. Reanga is a generation. Uh, pukana, you heard that one last week, uh, to stare wildly. Kai kōrero. Kai kōrero. Um, Megan was our kai kōrero this morning when she did the mihi. Uh, last week it was Chris. Uh, so they're your kai kōrero when they just do the very, very casual, casual mihi, friendly mihi. Tawira, that's us. We're the students, the learners. Pew pew is the thing behind me. Many of you know that. Tupakari is to stand strong. It, 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 it's in relation to kia kaha, to pakari. Taonga, you already know that. Treasure, ngāko, heart. Very, very important part of our um, vocabulary is ngāko. It's an expression about what's on our heart. And, and, and because of the the uh, nature of kanohi ki te kanohi face to face we used to marae style we used to actually saying it and you got to speak what's on your heart and sometimes it's not what people want to hear mm -hmm. but uh, maori find it it, it 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 advances us much quicker and with more clarity when we speak about what's on our narco 
and it's, if necessary, we'll do a haka to express it. Hide <laughs> my karanga mai, and there's katorika and mihingare again. Sometimes mihingare is spelt without the G. Both of them are correct, either way. So, unpacking kapahaka. Uh, Kahu Po, who some of you have met already, well, virtually that is, is of Ngātipuro descent. Whāngārā mai tāwhiti tāna marae. It is her marae. Her secondary schooling was at Queen Victoria School in Parnell in Auckland, now closed, but remained a member of the St Stephen's Queen Vic Trust Board right up until recently. She studied at Auckland University in Te Awanuiarangi. Kahu spent many, many years working in the post office savings and ANZ banks. Kahu served on the vestry of Temihana Māori as its treasurer, secretary and vicar's warden. And we all know what it takes to wear all those hats. And has been in the Auckland Anglican Māori Club since 1967, in the days of Tā Kingi Ihaka. She claims to be semi-retired now with a part-time position in corrections as a lay advocate Koti Rangatahi in the youth court in Waitakere. As many people like some of you, I'm sure, do in retirement, never retire. Kahu and Didi live at Selwyn Village and voluntarily play, and she play, voluntarily plays a small komatua role and has done for the past five years. She teaches the Māori language and waiata to a small class of 12 to 15 pakeke. She acts as the village's kai karakia, kai karanga, is the Māori displays person and is the helpful advisor and guide for all things Māori. She continues to make contributions at Auckland University and is kept quite busy, let's say. Retired? Yeah, right. So let's briefly hear from Kahu as she unpacks her kapahaka experience. I might be involved with kapahaka, well, I guess since I started walking, talking, it's almost, uh, well, I'd like to say 70 odd years, um, I suppose, yeah. I've been very blessed that um, growing up, when we lived in Rotorua, my parents used to take um, my sisters and brothers back to our grandparents' place in Pangara. And they, because we were the eldest mokos, we would sing with them. And I, I all, every time I do kapahaka, I always see my grandparents sitting there and looking at us in awe with big smiles because here were their mokopunas, you know, doing an action song. And we would be, what, five six years of age and then my grandfather died in 1960 so I was about 13 then but all those years I knew my grandparents were really proud of us and I always think about and see them sitting on the armchair looking at, at their lovely mokos, their eldest mokos, <laughs> um, you know singing these songs in particular doing a, a waiata ringa. yeah. My grandfather, um, in particular, he had a beautiful voice. And in the morning, we used to, they had a farm and we'd wake up and he'd be singing, sitting, singing loud. So we'd hear him and we, you know, we didn't have any clocks <laughs> or any alarms to wake us up at five o'clock in the morning to go milky. But we always heard our grandfather 
singing. And then late at, I mean, and then last thing at night after dinner, at seven o'clock, up us seven, we'd have karaoke. And again, yeah, you know, my grandparents would be singing a hymn. Yeah, so I've always been involved with kapahaka. What are the main disciplines in kapahaka? Um, for me, with my tamatatini hat on now, the main disciplines are the whaka eke, the uh, motetea, the poi, waiata aringa, the haka, and the whakawatea. So there's six items, and those were the items that were judged. And then we had a waiata tira, which was a non-aggregate item. Ah, what was your favourite? Um, waiata ringa or the poi. I enjoyed the poi, but I'm not all that good at the poi. I, um, yeah. But waiata ringa was the, one of the items. And I also enjoyed the haka. I just thought the um, men did a wonderful job. Um, and if we look at the haka in the 70s or 60s, you know, we had all these big men who were really wonderful, neat performers. And yet today, we very rarely see a big guy on stage. It's all these slim guys with big muscles, but they still do the job really well. Although I think, um, I guess I'm being... It's my Ngāti Parautanga <laughs> that tells me or well, says to me that, you know, because I was only very young seeing these big people perform on stage. And that was at the Hui Tōpū um, within the Anglican Diocese, because um, we were in the Waipu Diocese mainly, like the Hui Tōpū was like the Hui Amorangi that you have today. Whereas in my time bring, um, growing up from, I think the Hui Tōpū started about 1956. Ish, to um, so the hui topu was when I saw kapahaka because now we have you know kura tuatahi kura there's so much going on stage whereas when I was growing up um, Maori culture for me I only saw it on stage at the hui topu um, at the Anglican yearly hui and there we saw we had a junior choir and then we had the pakeke um, competition. But for me, yep, these big men, big men, and even the woman, Jacinthia, you know, they just glide along. They were just so beautiful to watch, all my big aunties and uncles. And yet, yeah, I can always see them on stage gliding along and their pupils swaying and these big men really giving it heaps. And they, there wasn't a lot of movement. Whereas today, there's so much movement. People are darting here, darting there. Even though choreography today is important for our, our rangatahi, I think. Whereas when I was growing up, seeing uh, my nati, aunties and uncles and kui and koro, yeah, they were fantastic to watch, I have to yes. say. Yeah. Give us an insight into a waiata aringa. Oh, um, I guess I'll have a do an angry one like no my picky my that the words go with your actions i mean you can't um talk about the rangi the sky and you're looking down down at the fenwa you know everything is going to um your words have to suit the actions and as a judge you you're always looking at at that and it is important that's why it's so important to see the words prior to doing the actions. And that's what um, Papa Kingi, when we used all his items, you know, he would learn the words first. And then we'd have to say, oh, what does this mean? And he'd tell us what it, you know, it means. So it meant if we're talking about the langi, it's there. If we're talking about the whenua um, and clapping or karanga mai or haida mai, you know, these are the actions. You wouldn't do haida mai up there or, you know, each kupu and the rangi would have to go uh, with the with the actions and um and that's what makes a waiata aringa so wonderful to watch and so beautiful i guess yeah but yeah. also the actions and the kupu need to go with your body movements it's just not about the actions even though i did say waiata aringa ringa is 
um, hand movements, but it also um, enhances the for uh, any of the items that are performed. It's your hold, your whole body, your wairua, atinana, talking, speaking, and you just feel within yourself about the words and we hear John say, think about the words, think about the words. You need to be thinking people, you know, and he's absolutely right. If we think of the words, we can remember the actions. Um, and that's, yeah, and the pew pew swaying, that helps and it makes the item, you look more beautiful on stage when your pew pew is swaying, your pew pew talks and, um, all of your kākahu, you know, it's your whole body, it's just not your hands and your waha and the words coming from you, it's your whole body that helps perform waiata aringa. And when I'm judging, you can see it written on the faces of the woman or the, the movements of the poi, you kind of see it um, and it just brings joy to my heart to see the smile, you know, your when you do the pukana, the, your um, the ihi, the kata kata on your on your face, it just is absolutely beautiful to watch um, in the waiata ringa. But it's your whole body has to talk, not just your ringa, not just your kupu, to enhance the composer. And to be fair to your composer, you know he you owe him or her that um, not only the kupu, but the whole of your body speaks and thanks the composer. And that's what's so important also when we're doing um, a cup, when you're involved with kapahaka. Um, yeah, everything talks, mm. your whole body talks. Kapahaka or wea today, you know, <clears throat> they use props now, um, and it does, it, it's wonderful the way, you know, you've, you've got um, kites flying or you have masks on or different clothing on that um, our kapahaka groups bring on stage. And, you know, there's always a message, you know, there's a political message going on or um, a couple of years ago, was it cowbells ringing? And every two years you see, see different um ways of showing kapahakas and there's a lot of theatre work going on there's a lot of dancing music you know gone are the two or four rows men and women in front of there's a lot of movement going on now with waiatauranga and I, I think it's really good although sometimes some of the there's too much movement and I when I was judging I mentioned that that I thought there was too much movement sometimes there is but I think um, the composers know how much movement to put in and they wear colourful, you know, someone will come dancing across the stage and waving flags and all of that. And, and that's good too, because it does show what Kapahaka is doing for the group, is doing for uh, Rato and Matakitakiana. And for the judges, it just, yeah. Uh, uh, it's just a platform to to give out our message, be about, um, I suppose, next year, hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll have Tamata Tini at Eden Park. I guess there's going to be, the message will be Corona or, you know, how to manaki teki wairua because it's our bodies and whānau, our whānau, and, and I think the message now is teki whānau, teki whakapapa. And all of that, that's going to be a message that's going to be put out there. So kapahaka is important because we as Māori people, it's for Māori by Māori. It's just so neat how our composers, what is happening with kapahaka today about the composition. Yes, and they are in the same reanga as Anti Ngoi Pe Whairangi, um, Timoti Karatu, and those who have gone uh, before us in Tāpirana, like I said, he was the father of um, action song, Princess Tapuya, all of those people, you know, 
they in their own right earn, earn that. And now today we see the same caliber coming through um, Pua Kapahaka. So where are we going to see this message, Jacinthia? You know, how else are we going to see this message? We don't see, for me anyway, I suppose because I go to Kapahaka all the time, I don't see that message or those messages put out there as much as we do um, on the Kapahaka platform stage. And we see 50,000 people go to Kapahaka, go to, to Matatini, 30,000 at Kuratuarua or at ASB for, you know, people just flock to competitions and each law here when they have their comps. So this is a message going out um, to us all and what better way to illustrate um, our message but by Kapahaka and seeing Kapahaka perform um, on stage but Sing it, not just singing, but perform, um, not just performing, but you know, clothing, um, instrumental props, colorful props, yeah, and all of that. So, there's so much going. You have drums, you know, um, the Ratana group from one Wanganui, the, they bring on their drums, and yet 20 years ago it was unheard of. You we were only allowed two string guitars, I think. Now Kapahaka is, and I think um, Tamata Tini is seeing that it is enhancing our, our items and it just makes, yeah, makes it more out there for everyone and more enjoyable and it's telling us we can do lots of things with Kapahaka now. We don't just stand in two rows and just go up, down, out front, you know, it, there's all this movement, there's all these props and it's, for me it's absolutely wonderful for our people and how it's seen in our everyday lives people would say oh kapahaka what's it going to do for you or te reo maori whereas now a lot of people bring kapahaka into their lives so for me whether you um a katorika mihingare Yep, kapahaka is important and um, it brings a lot into your life that you can share. Ngā mihi nui ki a koe, Jacinthia, a nō ngā mihi mahana, ngā mihi aroha ki a koe. Nau i tuku te wero, ki a hara mai a wau, ki te kōro ki au tauira, tino hari koa te ngā kakau, kei te noho a wau, i roto i tōku kāinga, ki te kōro ki a koe. Mō tēnei tāunga e pā ana ki te kapahaka. Mai te wā e paku paku a wau ki tēnei wā he ki te kuia haere me ki. Ko tētahi ngā tāunga mai hō o mātou tipuna ko te kapahaka tērā tāunga. Ko anitāpere tērā ngā kuia ngā kraua ko mene atu ki te pō mai te Te hahi mihi ngare, nga rātou i poi poi a wau i te taha ngōku mātua o kufana. Kia tūpakari a hau, hei kai kōrero, hei waha kōrero pia, ki tēnei taonga e pāna ki te kapa haka. Nga reira, he mihi tēnei, kia koi, ko ngā kōrero whakamutunga, nga tihi i hō mai. Te hinengaro, te katoa o te tinana. Kapa haka is the well-being for the soul.
Well, there's no hiding the delight that we experience, those of us who are involved in Kapahaka anyway. The delight is written all over our faces, as you have seen and witnessed right back from, you know, days of old. Uh, so we're very thankful to um, Kahu for her unpacking her experience, uh, particularly about waiata ringa and poi. Uh, and of course, she referred to no mai piki mai. That was the waiata ringa that, of choice that she spoke about. And that was the one that Kingi Ihaka wrote. We've learned it in the in Tahamari series. No my piki my ingaiwine. Na reo na mana tenara koto katoa. Beautiful song of welcome. Uh, and that's one of her favorites. And uh, I did note that she, when she talked about big women, you know, big women walking across the stage, which you don't see much of anymore. Uh, she used by name immediately afterwards. Big women, Jacinthia. <laughs> and um, there was a shot there where you saw the poise all shine. Um, they were, um, you know, when you use a black light. Uh, we went down to Te Papa. That's, Te Papa is down in Wellington. That's a museum there that we gather once a year there for Taikura. Uh, you've heard about Taikura last week. And um, we black turned off all the lights and our poise sh uh, shined up. And it was great to actually do. So that was all part of props, if you like, uh, what she was talking about. And, um, yeah, that whole body talking. So her corridor is no different to uh, John's last week, and you'll hear a little bit more unpacked um, next week. We move now to uh, Diana. Um, te ronga pai ta tapu ki te retenga a Matui, uh, te rima o na upuko ka timata fitu. Foka moi mitiatia, foka kororiritia, yeah. tia atua. Yeah. Uh, Koa te hunga tohu tingata i tohangia, Hoku hoki rato ka koa ti hunga na kama i kiti e kiti hoki rato e ti atua ka koa ti hunga o hua rongo ka hui ina hoki rato ti tamariki na ti atua. Ka koa ti honga e hokatoia ana mō tikika no rato hoki te ranga te ratanga o te ranga. Ka koa ka koutu ina tawa rato a koutu ina whokatoi ina hoki hoaki e rato ki Noa kuku kino. Katoa mo kautu i mea teka i foka aro ti hua. Ti aha, ki aha. Ti ronga pai tina a raiti foka mo imitia ia ti kuku mana. Lovely. Kora Diana. Well done. Mahi tikana or um, karaipituri, Mani your tika. scripture, karaipituri. Kapai. Te rarangi o te ra. Ki hai ne hoki te tama a te tangata E haramai kia mahia e mia mana. Enari kia mahi iha. Kia tuku 
hoki ia ia kia mate he utu mo na tangata tokamaha. Te inoi o te ra. E te atua mutunga kore no i homa kia kotahi te iriri mo te murunga hara. Tukua mai kia mato kua fano mai ite wai ite wairua hoki i hanga nei he pononga ma te karaiti. Kia kotahi a i roto te whakapono whakaroto me te mahi whakawaho. Ko ihu karaiti to mato ariki. Amine. Amine. Ka pai, Margaret. Ka pai. Well done. Well done. Eti atua kaharawa. He ata whaingia nau ki a mātou i tēnei taima i nā koutahi ai mātou ki te inoi atu ki a koe. Kua mea nei hoki koe. Ki te hui hui te hunga tokorua tokotoru rā nei i runga i tō ingoa. Ka tukoa mai e koe nā mea e inoi ai rātou. Haka mana aia nei e ihoa, nā hea hea me nā inoi a au ponona, ki nā mea e tau ana ki a rātou. Tukua mai ki a mātou, ki a mōhio ki tō pono, i tēnei ao, a i tērā ao, ki a tai atu ki te oranga tonu tanga. Āmene. Āmene. Kia ora, Deb. Hallelujah, And there's our contact details, of course, as per normal. Uh, we've finished our work for the day. It's been wonderful to share uh, what we have shared today. Uh, you'll see uh, a lot of the Hatea Māori Club or Kapahaka Club have contributed uh, their um, compilations with us, and you'll see them throughout the series of Taha Māori. That closing of the grace, uh, which you're all familiar with, um, that was the that was on the track of the blessing, Aotearoa, if you're familiar with that particular footage. Uh, that was uh, David Tapene, who's the um, kaiako, or the um, kaiwhakahaere, kaiwhakamana, if you like, of uh, Hatia Kapahaka Club. He, he finished that clip with that prayer. Uh, so a lot of those um, expressions you already know, we've, we've covered them in various aspects, uh, not necessarily in the way he's presented them on that clip, 
but you're already familiar with them. He honore he kororia ki te atua. So, yeah, lovely, lovely. Me koe ano hoki, uh, Deb. Uh, so thank you for joining us. If you want to ask me anything, please just simply unmute yourself. 